This is how the Holy Spirit works in us. He works not with compulsion, but with conviction. Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit works not with compulsion, but with conviction. You see, compulsion is about feeling forced. It's an external pressure that forces you, or at least make, makes you feel forced to make a decision. Conviction, on the other hand, is an internal exposure to the truth so that you can be made aware of the choice that you have and the truth that is right in front of you. So the Holy Spirit works in conviction, not in compulsion. What did we talk about the other day? We talked about how God doesn't want you to give what you have not decided in your heart to give. He doesn't want you to give reluctantly. He doesn't want you to give under compulsion, meaning there's this external force that's being applied to you, making you feel forced to give, making you feel forced to do the right thing, making you feel forced to be a joyful person, making you feel forced to show up at church, making you feel forced to try and be kind to others, making you feel forced to love your neighbor as yourself, making you feel forced to love God himself. God doesn't want that. God doesn't operate in that. The Holy Spirit doesn't operate in that compulsion. The Holy Spirit operates in conviction. The Holy Spirit, conviction being the word in the Greek, is to expose. The Holy Spirit exposes the truth to us, makes us internally aware of the truth and also aware of the choice that we now have. Because when the Holy Spirit convicts you of sin and convicts you of righteousness, convicts you of Jesus and, and who Jesus is and what Jesus has done and who Jesus declares himself to be, when the Holy Spirit makes you aware of that, exposes you to the truth of those things, exposes you to the truth of sin, when he makes you aware, he also makes you aware of a choice that you have. Because the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will never force you to choose God. The Holy Spirit will never force you to choose Jesus. The Holy Spirit will never make you feel forced or com compel you in that sense of making you feel forced to follow Jesus. No, the Holy Spirit will expose you to the truth, will expose you and make you aware of the truth, and then He will expose you and make you aware of the choice that you have now that the truth is laid out in front of you. Because imagine this, how could God be good? How could God be just? How could God be righteous if every one of us just was forced to choose him? That wouldn't be love. That's not the love that God demonstrated for us. See, Jesus died for us in Romans 5 verse 8 where it says, God demonstrate his love, demonstrated his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. What does that mean? It means that even if you were never going to choose to follow Jesus or believe in Jesus, Jesus still died for you. Every one of us is a sinner and Jesus died for every single one of us. Even if we never profess Jesus as our Lord or Savior, Jesus still died for us. Even if we never stepped foot in a church, Jesus still died for us. Even if we reject God to his face, Jesus still died for us. Even if we spend the rest of our lives uh, debating about how God is not real and about how Jesus didn't really resurrect from the dead, even if we spend our lives doing that, Jesus still died for us, all of us sinners. Even if you, you never turn away from the sinful habits that you know are wrong, that you know are hurting other people, that you know are harming other people, that you know is hurting God's heart, even if you don't turn away from those actions, Jesus still died for us. Jesus still died for you. So that is the extreme and most obvious example of how God will not operate in compulsion. The Holy Spirit will not operate in trying to force you from your external and, and make you feel these external pressures and make you feel forced to choose Him. The Holy Spirit will operate in conviction to make you aware and expose you to the truth and expose you to the choice that you have. I think that is a, a wonderful gift of God. 
It's a wonderful grace that comes from God that he would not force us, but that he would give us the truth and make us aware, open our eyes to see the truth, open our ears to actually hear the truth of God and also make us aware that we have a choice. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that is calling us into relationship with him. Someone who is not trying to lead us by force. Someone who is trying to restore a relationship with us by giving us a choice. He wants you to know that you have a choice. He wants you to know that your sins have separated you from him. Him being a perfect, holy, righteous God cannot have relationship with sin. And so even though we've sinned, he still wants so much to have a relationship with you. He still so loves you that he made a way by dying on the cross. Jesus died on the cross for your sins so that sin, when you believe in Jesus, sin would no longer separate you from him, would no longer separate you from relationship with a righteous, just God. That's how much he loves you. But this is the truth that is not forced on you. This is a truth that is exposed to you and you are made aware of by the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit will open your eyes, open your heart, open your ears to understand that you have a choice. You have a choice. You have a choice whether you choose to believe in Jesus and, be and follow him as Lord, or you choose to take that truth and that information, that revelation, and still follow your own way. Regardless what you choose, the Holy Spirit makes you aware there is always a choice. Everyone always makes a decision. No one is ever on the fence about Jesus. You might not have made a decision yet to follow Jesus, but your decision not to follow Jesus yet is a decision to follow yourself, is a decision right now to follow what the world might be showing you, what the world might be leading you to. I'm encouraging you to consider how the Holy Spirit is convicting you today. If you feel forced, especially when it comes to, let's say, giving, if you feel forced to give, it's not from God. It's not from the Holy Spirit that's working inside of you, that's speaking to you. If you feel forced to pray, it's not from God. It is, if anything, it's a guilt that you are trying to appease, that you are trying to lesson, a guilt that you feel that you're trying to lessen by trusting in your own good works, which turns out to be prayer in that time. So I'm, I'm encouraging you to consider that the Holy Spirit will not operate in your life with compulsion, making you feel forced to do something, but he will operate in your life with conviction, opening your eyes to see the truth right there that's right in front of you and the decision that you now have to make.